Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today's webinar is all about breakfast. So I hope that you've all fueled up this morning and you're ready to learn about developing healthier and non-HFSS breakfast products. So starting off with some introductions, I'm Martha. I work in the marketing department at Ulrich and Short. I'm joined today with Jess Banthorpe, who heads up our technical field support in Ireland, and Stephanie Kearney, who is one of our R&D technologists. And Steph was a key developer in the breakfast concepts that we're going to show you today. We're going to cover three main topics today. First, we're going to be looking at the latest trends in breakfast. Then we're going to delve into the HFSS regulations. HFSS was quite a hot topic over the weekend, so we're going to be looking at what the restrictions are, along with the most recent updates in the legislation and what the impact of this is. We'll finish off by looking at solutions for developing HFSS compliant products without compromising on product quality. To keep this webinar as interactive as possible, we're going to be launching a poll partway through, so make sure that you look out for that. There's also going to be some scannable QR codes um, in the bottom corner of your screens, and this will take you to some useful resources such as recipe sheets. So you might want to have your phones at the ready to scan these as we go through today. We are recording this webinar today and we'll be sending this out to all of you later on with all of those um, resources that I've just spoken about attached to that email. So don't worry um, or panic if you miss anything as we go through. Feel free to pop any questions that you might have in the Q&A box on Zoom and one of our team will be in contact with you to help with your inquiry. So for those of you who don't know who we are, I'm going to start off with a quick introduction to Ulrich and Short. So we are designers and suppliers of clean label, plant-based and functional ingredients. Clean label means that we've enhanced the natural functionality of crops using physical processing methods. And this means that all of our products carry a clean and consumer friendly back of pack declaration, such as pea protein, tapioca starch, wheat flour. All of our ingredients have been developed to provide a solution in products. And this could be things like reducing fat, reducing sugar, or helping to improve textures. There's no one size fits all answer with our ingredients. So everything that we do is based around hands-on technical support. We have a really experienced and knowledgeable field support and R&D team, and they're on hand to help you at any stage of the development process, whether that's creating kitchen concepts, scaling up to factory trials, all the way through to production, and this is to help you get the best out of our ingredients. So let's talk about breakfast. I'm sure that you've all heard the saying, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. There's a lot of research out there to support this statement. Eating breakfast is considered important for our health and well-being for a number of reasons. It gives us an energy boost. It provides an opportunity to consume important nutrients. And it also helps to control our appetite and prevent snacking throughout the day. Breakfast is a really broad category and it can cover anything from cereals to yogurts to bakery items to even cooked breakfast as well. With changing consumer behaviours, busy schedules, evolving dietary preferences and this new normal hybrid working pattern, we've seen breakfast habits being really significantly impacted. So we're going to look at three main trends that we're seeing cross category in the breakfast eating occasion. Trend number one is plant power. So a significant trend that we've been observing is the rise of plant based breakfast options. We've seen an increase in plant based products and plant based diets generally, but we are seeing significant rises in plant powered breakfasts. And you can see that by these statistics on screen here. These are showing the growth rate of plant-based product launches in these three subcategories. One of the main drivers behind the plant-based trend is because this diet option is healthier for consumers. So choosing a plant-powered breakfast provides them with a really nutritious start to their day. Traditionally, breakfast products perceived as healthy are options like granola, fruit, cereal, oats, and they're typically plant-based already but we're seeing growth in other categories such as yogurts and morning goods launching plant-based alternatives. This plant-based trend reflects the growing interest in health and more sustainable eating habits. 
So that leads me on to speak about the next trend of better for you breakfasts. So the pandemic highlighted the importance of health and maintaining a strong immune system. We're seeing consumers turning more and more to food as medicine and combining this with the HFSS regulations has led to an increased focus on more nutritious and better breakfast options. When we speak about health, we speak about it in quite holistic terms, but we can actually split it into these three subcategories. So at the bottom, we've got reductionism, and this is all about limiting or reducing products and ingredients that are bad for us. So things like fat, sugar, salt. In the middle, we've got naturalism, and this is all about choosing natural products, avoiding additives, preservatives, chemically modified, artificial ingredients. And then at the top, we've got functionalism. And this is all about choosing products that boost nutrition or positively benefit bodily function. So it could be things like adding in protein and fiber or adding in your micronutrients as well. In terms of HFSS, we're seeing both the reductionism and the functionalism aspects here when we're looking to reduce the bad and fortify with the good. And Jess will talk about this a little bit more in her section when we look at the HFSS legislation. So the third trend that we're seeing um, in the breakfast category is the rise of on-the-go breakfasts. The pandemic also significantly impacted our routines, including our breakfast habits. During the lockdowns, consumers really slowed down. They had more time to eat at home. But as we moved into this new normal, with the return of busy schedules, a new hybrid working pattern, we're seeing demand for quick, convenient and focused breakfast during the weekdays with that slower pace, more indulgent breakfast still being had on the weekends. Over half of consumers are looking for breakfast products that are easy to prepare. And we've seen growth in a lot of convenient products such as breakfast biscuits, granola pots, yogurt pouches, products that are really easy to grab and go but ones that also provide essential nutrients. So how do you stay ahead in such an established category? Being able to develop products that are healthy, provide satiety, are full of the right ingredients, and ones that taste great is really important. Today's consumers recognize breakfast and brunch as an occasion, and this gives a lot of space for innovation within this market. So before I pass you over to Jess, I'd like to launch our poll now. And this is to ask you, how aware of the HFSS regulations are you? Would you say that you're completely unaware, so you've never heard of HFSS before? Would you say that you're somewhat unaware, so you've heard of HFSS, but you don't know too many details? Would you say that you're moderately aware, so you have a basic understanding of what HFSS is and what it entails? Would you say that you're quite aware, so you're knowledgeable on HFSS and you know what their main provisions are? Or would you say that you're fully aware, so you have a comprehensive understanding and you're regularly staying up to date with changes and developments in the legislation? I'll just give a few more seconds for you to get all of your answers in there and then I will share the results with you. I'll just share these results now. So I can see we've got quite a big split here between some of you um, not knowing what HFSS is, all the way through to some of you being really um, fully aware and really understanding what they are and regularly staying up to date with the changes in the legislation. So I'm going to pass you over to Jess now, who's going to speak through the HFSS legislation. Thank you, Martha, and good morning, everyone. So in this section, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the HFSS regulations, the impact that we're seeing in the industry, and then some recommendations for reformulation. So as some of you might know, but some of you might not, HFSS stands for High Fat, Sugar and Salt Regulations, and the first of these came into force in October 2022. So why did these come into force? Well, the regulations are a part of the government's approach to dealing with the obesity crisis, particularly in children. It's also to try and reduce impulse buying and to really encourage the public to make better, healthier dietary choices. So the regulations impact 16 sectors within the industry, but to make it a bit easier, 
we've condensed these down to three main areas. Now these include beverages such as soft drinks and yogurt drinks, sweet and confectionery such as breakfast cereals and pastries, and savoury such as ready meals, pizzas and crisps. So if a food or drink product is classed as HFSS, then it will come under certain restrictions. Now the government have delayed implementing these regulations, the first of which were brought into force October 2022, and these were a ban on promotion by location such as gondola end. Now the remaining restrictions, which are a ban on volume sales such as two for one, and a ban on TV advertising, were due to come into force in October 23 and January 24. However, as Mava has mentioned, this was a very hot topic over the weekend, and it was actually announced that these last set of restrictions have been delayed until 2025. Now, the Prime Minister has stated that this is to help consumers with the cost of living crisis. However, it is really important to note that the restrictions themselves aren't inflationary and won't cause high prices, but will affect promotional strategies. So as we know, HFSS is calculated based on a nutrient profile scoring system. Now the QR code in the bottom of the screen will actually take you to our free nutrient scoring calculator. So if you'd like to calculate your product score, just give that a scan now. And while you do that, just a brief overview, if a food product scores four points or more, then it is classed as HFSS. And similarly, if a drink product scores one point or more, it is also classed as HFSS and will come under those restrictions. So let's talk a bit now about the impact that we're seeing in the industry. So just to put this into perspective, 64% of SKUs will be impacted across all the 16 sectors. Now this has the potential to half the volume of impulse categories. That is a massive hit and is going to affect both consumers and manufacturers. For example, the ban on promotion by location will likely affect cereal bars given their strong dependence on impulse buys. But similarly, yogurts are often on multi-buy, so the volume promotion restriction will affect this category significantly too. So let's talk a bit about how these changes are being implemented. From a consumer perspective, we're seeing buyers being more conscious, trying to balance the cost of health with the cost of buying products. From a retailer's perspective, we're seeing the changes in gondola ends being more in aisle displays implemented now instead. From a manufacturer's perspective, we're seeing them taking a, a more reformulation approach. So speaking of reformulation, let's look at that and explore the different avenues you can take to achieve HFSS compliance. When it comes to reformulation, we have found that the best approach is a multifaceted one. So by combining our fat and sugar replacement technologies alongside fortification via protein and fiber, these will impact both your A and your C points and together work to create that balance and achieve an overall healthier product. So the first two ranges I'd like to take you through are our fat and sugar replacers, and these are ingredients which are going to have the biggest impact on your A points. So the first range is Avante, and this is our sugar replacement range. The Avante range allows for up to a third of sugar to be replaced in various applications. Each ingredient within the Avante range has been developed to mimic the function of sugar that's being replaced. Now, whether that be for mouthfeel, texture or body. The second range is Delight, and this is our fat reduction range. Now, most of the Delight range is derived from tapioca, and this is because of the indulgent, creamy mouthfeel tapioca naturally gives. Again, each ingredient is developed to mimic fat, and up to a third of fat can be replaced with no adverse effects, and will actually lower your total calories again, contributing to improving the overall health of the product. So moving on now to fortification, we have complex, and this is our range of proteins. Now these come from a variety of crops, including pea, faba, wheat, and rice. And these can be used for binding, emulsification, and to help bring structure to various applications, as well as giving you that source of a high in claim. 
And now the final range I'd like to speak you through is cilia. And this is our functional fibres range. These again are derived from a variety of crops and can be used for binding and texture, as well as getting that source of and high in claim. With all the ingredients here at Ulrich and Short, we offer hands-on support and work with you to advise the best combination of these ingredients and help you achieve the outcome you desire. So I'm now going to hand you over to Steph, who's going to talk through some of the HFSS compliant products we have been developing here at Ulrich and Short. Thanks, Jess. In the upcoming section, we are going to speak to three products that are typically indulgent and are high in sugar and fat that we reformulated to be HFSS compliant. I will discuss the solutions we have developed to reduce sugar and fat and to add protein and fiber to help improve the HFSS score whilst maintaining overall product quality. On the bottom right hand side of the slide, there'll be a QR code which you can scan to download the recipes. Firstly, we look at a sugar reduced high protein cereal bar. So let's talk about binding syrups. Binding syrups for cereal bars and cereal clusters typically consist of a combination of ingredients that provide stickiness and cohesion to hold the bars and clusters together. A sugar syrup usually comprises of a sweetener, water, fat, and a flavor. Some common sweeteners include glucose and sucrose. Glucose syrup is a thick, sweet syrup derived from cornstarch. It helps prevent crystallization and it enhances the chewiness of the cereal bar. Sucrose is a common table sugar derived from sugar cane or sugar beet, and it, it adds sweetness to the syrup and it contributes to the overall flavor of the bar. Water is often added to the syrup to adjust the consistency aiding in the dissolving of the sweeteners. The amount of water added influences the viscosity and texture of the final syrup. Usually, binding syrups are heated to 115 degrees Celsius. So let's talk about the solution, which enables us to reduce those A points. So during the development of an alternative for sugar reduction in binding syrups, it was critical to ensure that similar functionality and properties were achieved to that of a typical binding syrup. We have developed an alternative, Avanti 2, which is declared as a tapioca starch. The Avanti ingredient is combined with water and is heated to 105 degrees Celsius, and it is then combined with the other components of the cereal bar. The Avanti ingredient doesn't replace the, the sweetness of sugar, it replaces the functionality. There is an option to fully replace your binding syrup with Avanti in water or to partially sugar reduce your binding syrup. To add, if the saturated fat in your recipe is exceptionally high, we have solutions that will help to reduce the overall fat content. Next, let's talk about adding protein to your cereal bar to increase those C points. Firstly, to be able to claim a high in protein claim, at least 20% of the energy value from the food must be provided by protein. Adding protein to cereal bars can offer several benefits in terms of both nutrition and functionality. Protein is an essential macronutrient and it provides energy and it contributes to the growth, repair and maintenance of body tissues. Incorporating protein into cereal bars, they make them more balanced and a nutrient dense snack option. This can be particularly beneficial for individuals who may not consume enough protein through their regular meals or for those who are following certain dietary patterns for example, athletes. What about the effects that protein has on the texture? Protein can contribute to the texture and stability of the cereal bar. It helps enhance the chewiness and firmness of the bar by providing a desirable mouthfeel. Additionally, protein can act as a natural binder, aiding in the structural integrity of the bar during production and storage. At Ulrich in short, we offer a range of different proteins, including including both textured and dry protein powders from a variety of different crops, including pea, rice, faba bean, and wheat. In this recipe, some of the oats were partially replaced with one of our textured pea proteins called Complex T16, and one of our powdered pea protein blends called Complex 26 was also used to boost that protein content. 
By boosting the protein content per 100 grams, you are helping the finished HFSS score of your product. The vast majority of cereal bars on the market has a HFSS score in the range of 9 to 15. This high protein cereal bar has a HFSS score of minus 5. Having a low score of minus 5 allows some developmental room to add more fat or sugar into the recipe if desired. The next application area that I'm going to speak you to is yogurt. Here at Ulrich and Short, we have developed a range of dairy and plant-based yogurts. Developing a luxury low-fat yogurt can present several challenges due to specific requirements and expectations associated with luxury food. Some of these challenges include texture and creaminess, flavour and taste, shelf stability. Let's talk about texture and creaminess. Low-fat yogurts often have a thinner and less creamier texture compared to full-fat versions, maintaining this luxurious and indulgent mouthfeel while reducing the fat content can be a challenge. Achieving a smooth and velvety texture similar to full-fat yogurts usually requires additional formulation and processing techniques, such as the use of stabilizers and thickeners. You may be thinking, what about the flavor and the taste? Fat contributes to the flavor and richness of the yogurt. Reducing the fat content can potentially impact the taste, making your yogurt less rich and satisfying. What about the shelf stability? Fat contributes to the shelf stability of the yogurt. Reducing the fat content may affect your yogurt's ability to remain stable and keep its desirable texture over time. Here at Ulrich and Short, we have developed a range of starch-based solutions for fat reduction in yogurt. Reducing the overall saturated fat in your recipe will reduce those A points, which in turn will help your HFSS score. We have developed solutions depending on the process that your yogurt will go through. So if you want to add a starch pre-pasteurization, we have a solution called Delight 9. And if you want to add a starch post-pasteurization, we have a solution called Delight 12 both declared as a, tapioca, as a tapioca. The tapioca solution will provide a smooth and creamy mouthfeel, glossy appearance and clean flavor profile since the granule shape is spherical and therefore more mouth coating. Due to the clean processing these starches have gone through, they are to withstand high, high temperatures, low pH conditions down to 3.5 and high shear processing. This yogurt has a HFSS score of minus one. To achieve the eight points, we use Delight 9. If you want to add sugar reduce your yogurt, we have solutions that can do this for you. As milk is naturally high in protein, no additional protein was needed in this recipe, but if you're developing a plant-based yogurt, we have solutions on offer that will increase those C points for you. The final concept that I'm going to speak you to is a HFSS compliant blueberry and banana breakfast muffin. Creating a healthy muffin can present several challenges as it requires finding alternatives to traditional ingredients that are typically high in added sugar, unhealthy fats and refined carbohydrates. Let's talk about texture and moisture of a muffin and the challenges it can pose. Replacing ingredients like refined flour and sugar with healthy alternatives can impact the texture and the moisture of your muffin. Sugar has hygroscopic properties, which means it attracts and it retains moisture from the surrounding environment. When sugar is added to a muffin batter, it, it helps retain the moisture, resulting in a moist and tender product. What about the nutritional balance? Well, creating a healthy muffin involves balancing the nutrient content while keeping it flavorful. It requires considering the overall macronutrient composition, such as the ratio of carbohydrates fat and protein, as well as the presence of dietary fiber and other essential nutrients, allowing a good nutritional balance that meets specific dietary needs or preferences can be a challenge without compromising on the flavor and the quality. As previously mentioned, reducing sugar can affect the texture and the moisture of your muffin. We have developed some clean label ingredients that can replace sugar in your muffin and other baked products without compromising on quality and the texture and the moisture of your muffin. In this muffin, Avanti 87 
which is declared as a wheat flour, was used to reduce the sugar content. This solution was used to reduce the overall sugar by 25%. Avanti 87 mimics the functionality of sugar without replacing the sweetness. In this recipe, one of our wheat fibers called Cilia WF90 was used. The fiber boosts the overall fiber content of the muffin, giving it a source of fiber claim, which adds a nutritional benefit, but it also helps to reformulate the muffin to, to be HFSS compliant. One of our pea protein powders called Complex 26 was used. Add pea protein increases the sea pines, but it also helps to emulsify and bind everything in the batter together. Have you ever experienced the fruit in your muffin sinking to the bottom? Well, Synergy Excess, which is declared as a maize starch, was used to help keep the fruit in suspension, but it also helps the muffin to retain its moisture over life. This blueberry and banana muffin has a HFSS score of zero. This low score zero allows some developmental room to add additional sugar or fat into the muffin if desired. Thank you for listening. I will now pass you back to Marta to finish up. Thank you, Justin staff, for providing us with those insights on the HFSS regulations and how to develop compliant breakfast products. We hope that you've all found this short webinar useful. As Jess mentioned, we do have a free HFSS score calculator on our website, so feel free to use this when developing your products. There's a link to it here on screen. And as usual, if you've got any questions or would like any help when developing breakfast concepts, then feel free to get in touch with us, either using the inquiries email here on screen or by popping any last questions in the Q&A box on Zoom. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope to see you on our next webinar.